what do I put in my hospital bag? I can tell you that with my first child, Lord have mercy, I had way too much stuff in that bag. I felt like I needed to bring the birth ball and the candles and the music and the, um, the clothes, three, four outfits. It was just way too much. And what I've learned is that um, the hospital, especially the hospital setting, has a lot of items already there for you. They're going to have the um, postpartum panties and pads that you need while you're staying there. They're going to have toothbrush and toothpaste for you. They're going to have, you know, um, wraps for the baby for when they first get here. So you're not going to have to worry too much about those type of things. But you do want to focus on three areas. And the first is yourself, the birthing person. What is key? What is going to be the main things that you need? Well, if you're going to the hospital, we want to make sure you bring your insurance card and all the things that you need to register. Sometimes you can register online beforehand, but you want to make sure that you're not caught up at the admin desk having to do paperwork or trying to find your card when you're in active labor. So the first thing is to make sure that you have your pre-admission paperwork and your insurance card. Another thing that you want to have, of course, is your birth plan. You've worked on this. You've thought about it. You have ideas about how you want your birth to go. And so make sure that you have maybe more than one copy of your birth plan, one for your birth support person and one for your um, medical providers as well. You're also going to want to have your toiletries. Some people like you know, to have their particular type of toothpaste and all of that. So you're going to be you in the hospital for a couple of days. You want to be comfortable. Pack your toiletry bag and definitely pack your glasses or contacts. Um, that's something that we can forget about because those things may be uncomfortable during labor and you may be leaving the home in a, in a moment's notice. And so you want to make sure that you have a... Um, alternative one in your bag. Maybe it's not your pack that you wear every day or, you know, some contacts that are um, already in their packaging so you don't have to run around and look for those on your way. Another thing is something to um, pull back your hair. Now, if you have long hair or hair that tends to get, you know, in your face, that can be very annoying during birth. So you want to make sure that you have a hair tie, a brush, something to pull your hair back because there is a tendency to get hot, sweaty, nauseous, and you the last thing you want to worry about is how you're going to get your hair out the way or having somebody hold your hair back when, you know, you're vomiting. You want to just make sure that you're able to pull that stuff back and access your face for the cool towels and the fans and all the love that you're going to be getting from your support team. As far as clothing, um, you can wear the hospital gown, so you don't have to bring anything to change into specifically for your birth. But some people do like to shop online and find a cute, you know, gown that's going to make you feel the most divine at this most divine time. So you can pack that. You want to make sure that you have some um, nursing bras or gowns if you plan on breastfeeding. That's something that you won't be provided in the hospital that will be very um, helpful, especially as your uh, milk begins to come in and your breasts get more heavy, you want to have a nursing bra to help support um, that, that new weight that's coming in. You also want to make sure that you have an outfit to go home in. You're um, not necessarily going to go home in the same clothes that you came in. And so make sure that you have a go home outfit. Now, we, we think a lot about the birth in person and we think a lot about the baby when we're packing, right? The baby needs a go-home outfit. And I encourage you to bring an outfit that may be newborn size, but also an outfit that may be um, three to six months because there's no telling how big that baby is. And it would be unfortunate for you to have a tiny little outfit for a chunky little baby. So I always encourage people to bring more than one size of a go-home outfit. And of course, you want to have a hat. We're going into these cold weather months, and we want to protect that baby's um, temperature. As a newborn, they don't know how to regulate their temperature yet, which is a big reason why we advocate for skin to skin. And so in the hospital, your baby's not really going to need much clothes. A swaddle blanket and a hat will be sufficient in order to um, take care of your baby in the hospital or in the birth center, typically you're going to want to put that baby directly on you. And so a naked baby is the best way to do that. You don't want to have to be fumbling with the onesie. You just want to be able to put that baby right on your skin so they can feel your heartbeat. They can regulate their breath according to your breath and their body temperature. 
So it's not really much for the baby. Grab a little wrap, little hat, couple outfits, but be sure that you have a car seat. Um, that's a big thing. Once you get discharged, you have to make sure that that baby is securely in the car seat. So have that ready to go. If it's the kind that has a little base, you want to make sure that you've practiced getting that in and strapped in so you can just bring the car seat up, load the baby, and then go on back to your journey home. One um, person that we often forget about in packing the bag is the birth uh, partner, the support person. We want to make sure that you're comfortable as a support person because you are the one who is holding the space and being grounded. So make sure you have on comfortable shoes and socks. Have a change of clothes also for yourself because imagine you're supporting someone in birth and you're there for 24 hours. You might need a change of clothes. You might need a change of underwear. So the birthing per uh, partner definitely wants to make sure to have their um, supplies as well. One thing that is may come up if the partner is um, going to support you in the water. We want to make sure that you have a swimsuit or some, you know, some shorts or something so you can get in the bath, get in the shower, and support that birthing person as well. And a lot of times you're going to be the videographer. You're going to be the person who is documenting this wonderful occasion. So make sure that you have your charger for your phone, your camera, all of those items that are going to help you um, capture those memories for this event. And the number one thing, and y'all might think I'm, you know, being funny, but the number one thing is since 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 when you are the partner of someone in labor okay we got pregnant people on here how many people with the sensation if you smell something it can turn you left or turn you right like once you are pregnant those senses are heightened that does not change during labor the last thing you want is somebody with garlic breath breathing on you, telling you you're going to be all right, or somebody with body odor saying, let me hold you up. So as the birth partners, we want to make sure that we are so fresh and so clean, got a little mouthwash, a little toothbrush, something, because we want to be able to stand and be there as a support to our birthing people and um, not accost them with any smells. And it can be as simple as a um, the new clothes smell. Maybe you have something that you just took out of the plastic and that smell can be really strong. So you want to be aware of what um, scents you're bringing into the space. Does anybody have any questions about the bag? And um, if you want to raise your hand for a question so I can unmute you, when you go into um, participants, you can see the uh, raise your hand symbol. Okay, Cynthia, go ahead and unmute.